This meeting is being, excuse me, excuse me. This meeting is being recorded per Governor Lamont's Executive Order 7B. Thank you, Kim. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the May 11 meeting of the Weathershield Historic District Commission. For those of you who have not been here before, tonight's meeting is composed of two parts, the public hearing and the public meeting. In the public meeting, we ask each applicant in turn to come forward and explain their application in detail. This will give us an opportunity to clarify what it is that you are proposing to do and for you to ask us any questions. Commissioners may voice an opinion or suggestion based on their own feelings. However, a vote is not taken until the public meeting following the public hearing. In the public meeting, which is not open to public comment, we will deliberate your application and decide how to act on it. We may approve it, approve it with stipulations, table it for further consideration, or in rare cases, we may deny it. You are welcome to stay for the public meeting, but need not do so. The results of tonight's meeting will be available from the Weathersfield Building Office tomorrow at 860-721-2839, anytime after 9 a.m. Please be advised that the Historic District Commission approval does not preclude the need for any other required permits, such as zoning, inlands and wetlands, or building. Please contact the building department to review any other per permits that may be required before you begin your construction. With this, I'll ask our clerk, Commissioner Lyons, to read our legal notice. Thank you. Legal notice, Town of Wethersfield Historic District Commission. The Wethersfield Historic District Commission will hold a virtual public hearing on Tuesday, May 11th, 2021 at 7.30 p.m. on the following applications seeking a certificate of appropriateness. Application 6034-21, Cynthia Brown, seeking to replace garage door with CHI 5216 carriage house steel door at 32 footpath lane. Application 6035-21, Mary O'Dell, seeking to replace garage doors with Haas 600 series recessed panel steel doors at 41 Oldham Road. Application 6036-21, Peyton Clancy and Tanya Heacock seeking to replace siding on a house and garage with certainty Cedar Impressions vinyl siding on in charcoal gray color, changed light picture above garage doors to vice black aluminum lanterns at 55 Hartford Ave. Application 6037-21 Gove Restoration LLC seeking to replace porch windows with Marvin Ultimate Casement Windows at 415 Main Street. Application 6038-21 Grove Restoration LLC seeking to replace porch windows with white Marvin Elevates casement windows at 52 Garden Street. Application 6039-21 Thomas Ayers Jr. seeking to install cedar split rail fence along West Property Line at 18 Footpath Lane. If you wish to review the applications on file, you may request a copy by contacting HDC comments at weathersfieldct.gov or by calling 860-721-2836. Live participation is available by audio format. Any resident interest in speaking on an application or wishing to listen to the meeting should email HTC comments at weathershillct.gov or call 860-721-2836 by 6 p.m. on the night of the meeting to be sent phone number for audio access. Please include your name, phone number, and address in the email. Town of Wethersfield Historic District Commission, Kim Wolf, duly authorized, dated at Wethersfield, Connecticut, this 26th day of April, 2021. Thank you, Chris. Um, I, somebody's got their hand raised, but they're on mute and they're listed as Tina W. Yeah, hi, this is uh, John Weiner. I didn't see my name on the agenda. I thought I was originally on here for the second go around from my porch. Yeah, we're just reading the legal notice. Oh, I'm sorry, I apologize. Uh, yeah, that's I'll okay. I'll lower my hand. You're on here. You're number three. I'll lower my hand and just go back That's to. Okay. Sorry Thank about that. You. Yep. We're going to start with the holdovers from our last meeting. Application 66021-21, the application for 14 River Road. Would you identify yourself with your name and address, please? Tracy Riley, 14 River Road. Hi. Welcome back. Hi. We got an email late today. We had some um, trouble with the email at town hall today, but we did get your email that showed a hand drawing of the placement of the pool and then your plot plan um, with where the fence is going to go along with a picture of the actual fence. Hopefully everyone had a chance to look at that. I sent everyone a message late also to look at that. Um, the only question I had on it 
was I can't tell on the um, west side or um, right of your house. Is there a gate there? There'll be a gate from our back porch to the side of the garage. Okay. And how tall is the fence? Six feet. We're not going to put up the, the deck. That's great. So six, six foot wood stockade fence, good side facing out, and um, you're going to go without the decking around the pool, just with a ladder into the pool. That is correct. That's great. Does anyone have any questions for the applicant? Hearing none, do you have any questions for us? No, not at this time. Great. Anyone from the public wishing to speak in favor or against? Hearing none, we'll move on to application 6029, the application for 26 Wilcox Street. Name and address for the record. Hi, uh, Daniel Moser, the contractor from Nova 22. 80 Silver Springs Drive, Higginham, Connecticut. And I there. So we, well, we, have your, we have your pictures, but I didn't see any additional details about the fencing material. I'm sorry, the uh, material for the deck, your railings and the posts, or any, well, the, any the, detail the, about uh, <clears throat> lattice around the bottom or anything like that we, that we had discussed. I submitted a few pictures because they have an existing deck off the back of the house. Uh, I'm not sure if you saw those pictures. No. They were submitted with the application. Uh, I gave an entire uh, folder with them. Right. Um, when we were here last, we had asked for more detail about what that deck was going to look like, what the materials were going to be, what the railings would look like, the stairs, and whether you were going to do any lattice work around the bottom. And Daniel, it's Kim Wolf. I we you and I had a phone conversation about this a couple of days last week, and we talked about the fact that you needed to submit more information for this application. I did. I submitted. They when I called uh, on Thursday to town, uh, they said to leave the application with the um, the girl at the at the bottom of the stairs uh, at the entrance, and left the whole uh, packet over there with all the new pictures and diagrams of what's going to look like. I don't have it. What girl? What girl would that be? I I don't know her name. She's at the entrance at the uh, entrance of the town hall. Maddie is our is our um, attendant, <clears throat> and I didn't did not receive anything. Uh, yeah, I, I gave it to her. She said she'd give it to Kim. Um, there's a packet with the pictures of the existing deck that's in the back, which were matching the back porch as well. The same kind of railing style, same lattice work, and I have a design with the door and the, and everything in that packet. I dropped it off, I put attention to Kim, Historic Society, put my name on the folder and everything. I'll have to look for it. Um, you said it had pictures of the design of the door on the back because we did receive something that was new that had the window and door slider door or French door placement on the back. Is that what you're referring to? Uh, that one, but there's also uh, pictures of the, the design of what the railings are gonna look like because we're going to match the exact deck they have in the back of the house. So it'll be the same material, same wood, same white uh, railing with the lattice, uh, you know, uh, encasement around the bottom of the deck as well. Same steps, the two by uh, 12, uh, two by six for the deck uh, boards as well. So we're, we're matching what they have existing on the house, the okay. same design we style. We received well, what, one what piece, but not the rest of the material. Right, so what was in your packet, what we did update, um, there was a divider page with whatever was submitted um, Thursday or Friday. I just, it was expecting some more to come in. So whatever we got, it was, that was it. Just the, the window cut sheet, I'm looking at it now. But there's nothing for the, um, the lattice work or the railing work that we asked for. Yeah, wasn't that uh, so? You, did you receive that packet? It was a uh, a big folder, a yellow folder. Yes, that's what I'm saying. But we there is still stuff missing that we were, at, were that you and I had talked about. Correct, and I I'm pretty certain it was in that packet. Unless for some reason I'll have to check my office, but I'm pretty certain I but I put that out. We all, we all received a pack of what you supplemented from the last, and that material was not included. So I think we're going to pass you again. Um, 
for tonight because we're not going to guess at it. We need those actual details. So um, I think we're going to move on to application number 6033-21, the application for 271 Garden Street. Yeah, hi, John Weiner, 271 Garden Street. Hi, welcome back. Thank you. Thank you for the additional material. You're welcome. Um, does anyone have any specific questions for the applicant? I think everybody had an opportunity. Yeah, it, it was very helpful to see your additional detail. Thank you. And You're I welcome. think we had the opportunity to view your samples for the stuff you had last time. Did you have anything else that you wanted to tell us tonight? I don't think so. I got everything that we uh, took notes on for last meeting I uh, gave in that uh, new packet. So I think we are good to go. Um, those architectural drawings were included, or at least a scanned copy of the giant architectural drawing. Um, and that's, so I think we get a good visual of what it will look like. Okay. Um, I think it's gonna be a good addition to the area personally. Okay, I don't have anything further. Does anyone else have anything further? No. Great. Uh, any members of the public wishing to speak in favor or against? Hearing none, we'll go on to application 6034, the application at 32 Footpath Lane. I see Cynthia Brown's name. Um, you're on, she's on mute. Kim, is that you or her mute? I will ask her to unmute, but she does not have a functional camera. So when she's on. Okay. I am trying to unmute her. Hear me now. Yes. 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 Oh, thank you. I'm sorry. Yes, I'm um, seeking to replace my garage door. The house was built in 1961. Excuse me, 1961. And it's really failing. Thus, my application. Great. And just for the record, um, can you just identify yourself, your name and address? Of course. Cynthia Brown, 32 Footpath Lane. Great. Thank you very much. I think we've got all the details. Does anyone have any questions for this applicant? Cindy, uh, this is Claire Mead. Just tell yes, us, um, tell us why you chose this door. Like, what what made you think like this one? Well, I wanted the carriage door. Mm -hmm. I thought it was very fitting in our neighborhood. Others have it. My neighbor, directly to the right of the front of my house, and I wanted windows in the garage. Also, I have been unable to get into the garage if the power goes out. The new door will afford me the opportunity to have some type of a lock that will give me entry if there's no power. And it's been a little embarrassing because I've had to have my neighbor next door climb in through the window. <laughs> so I'd like very much to have that rectified. Very good. Thank you, Cindy. You're welcome, Claire. Thank you. I'm generally not a fan of the windows that are curved on a door with um, square panels, but your garage door frame area is also curved. Yeah. Yes, um, it is. I think in, in your case that it um, is suitable. Yeah. Does anyone else have any questions? My, my only concern is sort of to echo off of uh, your thoughts, and that is the the curve is lovely because it matches the surround around the garage. However, unfortunately, it is framed in a rectangular box, and your eye is drawn to the rectangular box rather than to the curve of the windows. And the two are sort of sitting there and fighting each other. And it, I, I just find it visually confusing. 
I, I agree, Vasek. And these doors, I prefer the um, the doors that the windows more accurately replicate the blocks below them, you know, so the panel yeah. and the windows are more closely aligned. Or um, if they could figure out how to stick them directly into the door instead of doing an applique. Yeah. Yeah, and this particular brand, you know, they're, they're sticking in this um, separate window project into it. I agree. If I may speak, um, Lance Lafrenier, Northeast Overhead Door, um, actually the contractor who submitted the estimate to Cynthia Brown. Uh -huh. um, now the window design is, is pretty standard on all doors. Um, it's a, a rectangular window and it has a vinyl insert on the outside. Um, now to go to something as you speak of, you're talking thousands of dollars of, of an upgrade to have a window that's actually made curved in that door frame. Right. Um, you know, as Cynthia said, multiple other homes in the neighborhood have, have the same style inserts. Um, just pointing that out. So I think what you're hearing, though, is that just because the neighbors have it doesn't make it any less jarring uh, until you, everybody has it and then you stop seeing that. But the ideal thing, if, if this is being driven by cost, then if you simply went with a rectangular window and then you'd have a rectangular window fitting in a rectangular hole and that would look a lot less jarring. Um, so with her particular garage, such as the corners being rounded, mm -hmm. yep. um, it would actually cut off the corner of the glass. And typically that's more of an eyesore to most homeowners and, and individuals rather than the, the white frame. Um, you know, from a distance back, it's not something that's very noticeable. When you're looking at it black and white on a piece of paper, um, it's much more noticeable and distinct, you know, than when you're actually out in public, if you will. I'm I sure really you're wish aware that the cost of the product, unfortunately, oh, did I just lose you? No, okay. Um, does not dictate our decisions. No, sure, I understand. Not one of the things, and there are products that do do that a little bit better. And so that's what we were talking about. I just wish that the garage door manufacturers would start, start making three panel doors instead of four panel doors. And that would make these problems basically go away for the most part. Yeah. Sir, I don't know your name. Would you introduce yourself to me? This is Cynthia Brown. Vatsik Miglas. Hello. Um, that's a very old picture of the side of my house, firstly. I really don't agree with you at all. It is rounded at the top, which Don Bosworth designed. I truly believe that a rounded window would be much more appropriate than your suggestion to have just rectangular windows. So I really don't agree with you. I think it Ms. would look much, much better. You're right, Ms. Brown. Ms. Brown, you're entirely right. If you had a rounded window in a rounded hole, it would look great. Unfortunately, what we're talking about is the framing around the window is not also rounded. Unfortunately, it's a rectangle frame that they insert into this door. So they make a whole bunch of doors that are the same and switch out this window unit. So that's what we're discussing. You're right. It's, you know, we have others in town, um, you know, just not every door is appropriate for every location. But your point is well taken. Does anyone else have any questions for the applicant? Ms. Brown, do you have any other questions for us? No, okay. I just like the design and I very much would prefer it. Thank you. We appreciate you coming in tonight. Anyone, Thank you. Anyone from the public wishing to speak in favor or against? Hearing none, we'll move on to application 6035, the application for 41 Oldham. Uh, for the record, I'm going to be abstaining. Um, the applicant is a relative. Okay. 
Welcome, Aaron. You're muted. Different than I'm used to Microsoft Teams. Uh, I'm here on behalf of my parents, uh, Fred and Mary O'Dell. They live at 41 Oldham Road. They're out of town, so I'm here to listen in on the um, app, their application request. Any questions you have, I'm prepared to answer. I, my sister, Sarah Galati, is on the line as well. She might be muted, so uh, yes. let me know if you have any questions. And Kim, if you can unmute Sarah. And Aaron, Aaron, can you just give your name and address for the record for us? Yep, Aaron O'Dell, 59 Morgan Circle, Weathersfield, Connecticut. Thank you and welcome and welcome Sarah. If she Hi. Appreciates. Hi everybody. <laughs> um, Hello. So door application um, with a similar product. Does anyone have any questions for this applicant? So Mr. Odell, this is Claire Mead. I, I'm going to ask you actually you all both the same type of question. You've gone, um, your parents have gone from a, a flat um, uh, windowless door, and you've chosen this one with um, a lot of little panes. So tell us, walk us through that choice process, please. It's with what, windows? Mm -hmm. And that um, particular window product. Aesthetics and matching what similar neighbors have upgraded in the area, um, Oldham Road, Chesterfield, Rainer Lane, and I know Footpath as well. We've been down, um, looked at some houses down there. So they wanted to keep it within the realm of what's been approved or accepted in the past. Um, the contractor that came over showed them some options that were similar. It's the recess panel door. Yes, it has windows. They're not concerned about that. There's a window on the side of the garage as well. So it's not like it's inviting, you know, someone to come and peek in the garage. Um, and if you look at their street, it's, it blends in. It's not going to stick out. Um, that's out of the ordinary. Does that answer the question or? Yeah. Thank you. That gives us a peep into their thought process. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyone else have any questions for this applicant? Hearing none, any members of the public wishing to speak in favor or against? Thank you very much, guys. We're gonna move on to application 6036-2 in the application for 55 Hartford Avenue. Hello, everyone, how are you? Hi. Hi. I'm Mark Deutsch of the Georgie Roofing and Siding. We're out of Beacon Falls, Connecticut. I think you all know our name. And over on Hartford Avenue for uh, Peyton Clancy we're, and his uh, partner there. We propose on stripping the existing wood siding. And I think we're gonna put some insulation board on there, yes. And then we're gonna install cedar impressions, double seven inch. Um, the shingle, same similar shingle look, the exposure pretty close to what it is now. And I'm gonna glance over here for a moment. We're gonna have the mitered corners on there. So uh, it won't be vertical uh, post, so to speak. It'll look, it's awesome, they, 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 they're doing it right here. The post on the front porch stays as is, and uh, that's it. And what are you doing with the trim? That'll be a uh, white aluminum wrap trim, and it'll have some, yeah, like we do on all of our jobs, or most okay. of them. And the returns on the front gables are going to be maintained? The returns on the front So do you, do you have a photograph of the house in front of you? I will in a moment. Yes, sure. I know what you mean. You mean like the boot on the rake boards? Yep. Yeah, that's yeah, sure. Okay. Yes. And uh, the trimmer on the windows, you're going to do, how are you going to treat the existing brick mold? It'll be wrapped and it'll have a bevel in it and mitered corners on the aluminum wrap trim. Okay. Um, Thank you. I, I have a question. I, as this house, as many of the houses 
um, you know, let's see, Kim, can you, could you push in a little, zoom in a little closer? At the top, at the end of each course, there's a notch up. Will you, be will you be retaining that detail? It's a very standard, very, very lovely little standard detail that's in many of the capes uh, from this era in Old Weathersfield. We're taking that fucking rake board off, so it's not gonna maintain that. What did somebody say in there? I heard somebody say something. The Peyton patients. said something. Okay. Yeah, I, you know. So we're talking about those the cliff yeah. corner on each end it, on those shapes. It's, it is I, it's a it's a small detail, and I'll tell you we love this product. Um, it's one of our most favorite. If you're gonna go to vinyl and it, and it's a shake, this is it for sure, um, because it does such a good job in our our most successful replications of houses with shakes on them in Old Weathersfield have this product on it and have the mitered corners. Um, but it, that's the one detail that's going to be lost on this house. And I mentioned it um, to our coordinator when I saw the application. Yeah, I hate, um, I feel like we are losing it all over the district. And it is, it's so, I, I, it's little, but it's very much a, an identifying feature on small capes that don't have a lot of other features. Right, that are very simple. Otherwise, is, I, I'd be surprised if the product had it. Do you know if it's something uh, that can be Yeah, done? you know, if, it's, if it can be done, we'll do it being practical and uh i don't know how practical it is because you have uh, then you're exposing you're exposing more of the f the course below it and that's not intended to be that way yeah. right the, the reveal there of the lower course so it's it's probably not the right thing to do well you mean the right thing from a practical vinyl siding perspective as opposed to from, the right thing from a historic preservation perspective right. thank you yeah. I meant from, I hear you and I understand yeah. you. It's a good thought, but I don't think it can be done because uh, with, with this, with Cedar Impressions, okay. and I might be wrong, but you're exposing again, more of the course that should be covered, the upper part of the, the panel. So I hear you, I understand you. And, uh, and that's it, you know, I, if it can be done and it's practical, We'll give it a shot, but I don't think it's the right thing to do for manufacturer specifications. Peyton? Um, I was just going to say that one of the reasons that's coming off is the rake boards are rotting. So the rake boards are coming off on those corners um, so we can have the vinyl siding. And they're already rotting in, in several places. So it's not really practical to keep those corners because they are exposed to so much water and wind over there um and they're all rotting out as is i, I think they're talking about a different thing peyton they're talking about the i might be wrong they're not talking about the end of the rake boards no. they're talking about the way the the reveal is underneath the rake board Wait, that, right. that there's a little vertical notch in the end of the panels is that am yeah, i correct can you yes. can you go back and share screens and show them so on each row of shakes that you have, on each end of the row of the shake, there's a little notch cut out of each see shake. See right there? Can you oh, see? Oh, okay. Yeah. I see what you're saying. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's a small detail, but it's one that mm -hmm. makes the house look really cute. And, um, you know, obviously it's been there a while. The it looks like it's in great shape. How come you're not painting? Um, it's, it's definitely like an older photo, I believe, uh, cause a lot of the paint is coming off. Um, yes, there is a lot of rotten wood in, um, many places. And then we do need more insulation. So taking the, uh, existing siding off and putting all new insulation is going to help as well. Uh, and the house, is paint, the, the house is painted when we moved in like eight years ago or so, like right previously to that. And it's already peeling and with a lot of rotten wood in a lot of places. So I don't know, I, I think it's kind of, I don't know, a waste to paint it and then have to paint it again in 10 years or whatever. It's just, you know, we can just fix the problem. Are you gonna be in the house for 20 years? I'm sorry? Are you gonna be in the house for 20 years? I plan on it. You'll be I changing mean, I, the siding. What's that? You'll be changing the siding. No. <laughs> 
I doubt that. You want, you, want a new, you want a new color, which is much harder to do when you've put plastic up. Um, well, and it'll fade, but you know. Interesting, okay. okay. Well, that, that's my concern with this application is just um, Cedar Impressions is a nice product for the right, for the right um, location. Um, but I feel like we, we, we are losing a detail that's seen in an awful lot of houses and we're losing it across the district. So thank you. Um, anyone have any other questions for the applicant? Thanks very much for coming in. I love this house, by the way. Um, anyone from the public wishing to speak in favor or against? Hearing none, we'll move on to the next application, 6037, the application at 415 Main Street. All right, good night, everybody. Take care. Hey, everyone. My name is Matt Gove uh, from Gove Restoration. I live at 70 Main Street in Wethersfield. Welcome back. Thank you. Tell us about your project. Yeah, so um, the owner has four sets of like a casement style window. It's an in-swing in window on those porches, like many of the porches are. Um, they're just, they're beyond, they're beyond repair at this, at this point. It's a lot of broken glass, a lot of broken sash. Um, so she wants to replace them. The product that I proposed to her was the similar product to what we used at 374 Main Street uh, when we replaced their casement window as part of a, a kitchen that we did. And it's a Marvin product. It's it's the uh, I believe it's their Slimline series, but it's a simulated divided light. Um, it uh, comes in a color, and the color will match her trim color that's currently there. And our plan was to just kind of remove the guts of the porch windows and insert these new units into that space. They will be outswing windows. Um, the the one thing that we right now she she doesn't the way that porch is designed that there's a there's a lot of issues with water flow off of the sills. So um, we are gonna keep the, the, the existing flat sill board, we'll call it, that's there. And we're just going to pitch it a little bit with a couple of shims just to pitch it forward. So water flows the, instead of into her porch, out of her porch. Then we're gonna set the new window in, in, into that opening and then um, transition it to the siding with some trim. It's a aluminum siding on that house so we, we don't want to get into a situation where we're going to be removing any siding or anything like that so it's going to be sort of kind of a um i don't know how to des describe it um type the minimal type of um uh, not minimal it's a not very invasive uh project in terms of affecting the siding around it so the um i should also say i do have some samples here and i can show you um but the uh <coughs> The, the check rail in between the upper and well, between the top two lights and the bottom two lights is a little bit wider. So we're going to replicate that as well because I feel like that's important. I feel like that gets lost a lot of times when you're doing these kind of window jobs. So it does have a wider check rail. So we will be able to still mimic the same look of those, of those windows and, and it will be the same light pattern as well. I think it's hard for me. I don't know about everyone else. It's an awkward window yeah. replacement on an already awkward situation because it was an open porch. Yeah. Obviously, it was meant to be an open porch. And so everything you put in doesn't look quite right. Yeah. Um, that's kind of what I was, that's what, that's what my fear was as well. Um, because I, I know how, it impo how important it is to kind of remain, you know, maintain that sort of historic look. And, and those windows are, they, they're, they're older, they're an older window. And what I didn't want to do is make something that looked too modern in there. So I was trying to really find a good product that would fit into that space that would, that would best match. And your plan is, um, the proposal anyway, is two over two again. Yeah, it's the same, yeah. And you know, just as a reminder, the house you referenced um, down the street that we used this one on, um, it, there was a lot of discussion about the fact that that window was down the side and well out of view, um, and wouldn't the tail wouldn't wag the dog if windows were being proposed in the rest of the house based on that one window. 
So I don't know, what, do, what does everyone else have to say? I uh, have some real concerns about, if I understand this correctly, uh, you're talking about putting casements in place of double hungs, is that right? No, they're, they're, they're an in-swing um, uh, porch window currently. Right so now? It's, it's, yeah, yeah. So it's one whole panel that swings into the porch and we're, we're doing a true casement where it will swing out. So it's, it's one sash. So each, each window consists of two separate sashes that both will swing out. As opposed you know, to currently what she has, which are two separate sashes that swing in. That swing in, right. I mean, part of the problem with them swinging out is that in the open position, first of all, you can't have them open with the weather. Uh, you know, the weather has to be good. Otherwise, <coughs> unless they're mounted awning style, the rain is going to come in. Um, but I think they're going to look even more obvious to passersby in the out position, at least on the in position, um, it doesn't hit you in the same way. I realize it's a difficult situation um, yeah. to try to reconcile what's the best op option there, but does anybody else think that a, a, a double hung might be a better choice? Well, then the double hung, Kim, can you bring the picture up again? I mean, the, I mean, the best option is to take out the windows and restore the porch, but um, we've already- so Think of can, it I this speak, way. can I speak to the double hung suggestion? Sure. The, the issue with the double hungs, in my opinion, is right now we're dealing with um, a window that has an entire, just one plane of, of window. There's no, there's no step back to the sashes. So if you put a double hung in there, you're going to have a top sash that's, that's proud of the bottom sash. So that's, that's, we, we, had, we had thought about double hungs as an option when we, were, when we were chatting about it. But when I made my recommendation to the homeowner, I, I thought, okay, well, we have one whole sash. It's one rectangle. And if we keep that same design, that's at least close to what we, we have existing. So that was my, that was my thought. But if, I mean, if, if you guys um, feel more comfortable with double hungs, I'm, I'm certainly not opposed to it. And I know when I spoke to my, my client, she, she wasn't all that opposed to it as well, but. Just to be clear, would those be in, would that additional space occur on the inside i mean you're not talking about what? uh installing it so they stand outside the yeah. uh, building line no what i'm saying is that in order to have a double hung window the bottom bottom sash has to slide up past the top sash right so you don't get both sashes on the same plane essentially Correct. Stacked right. so that's why I, I recommended this product but you so you need to retrim the interior essentially either way we'd have to retrim re the interior Doug, think of it this way, and I think this may sway you, is an outswing casement window will have the screen on the inside, okay? Because that's the way they're done. Uh, so when the window is closed, you're gonna see glass from the outside. These windows actually can stay open due to the large overhangs on the porch. So even in inclement weather, they, they can be partially open. Uh, so needed, uh, but it's a porch and porches had casement windows, whether they swung out or swung in. Uh, I don't know who made the comment about how it hits you. Well, if you got casement windows, they're going to hit you on the inside or the outside. Yeah. Literally. Yeah. yeah, I mean, to your point, Vasek, my, um, you know, sunroom windows swing out. Mm -hmm. You know, it reads more of a sunroom porch than this does because it's not all windowed. You know, they've yeah. more enclosed it as a house. You know, I think um, all factors being considered, as I said, open porch, best look. Now, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to see a porch being enclosed asking for this, but given what we have already here, you know, I think that maybe that's our best option. Um, can I ask what folks think about the fact that these are going to be two over twos and the rest of the windows in the house are one over ones? Would it be an improvement to have it just be a one over one like the rest of the house? 
I don't think so. Uh, por porch windows simply, if it's a casement window, you're, you're looking for one huge piece of glass and nobody did a piece of glass that big. So it'd still be broken up in two pieces. Traditional porch windows and storm windows also, which there's a, I don't know, Matt's looked at these closer. Uh, it's possible that they reuse storm windows from someplace when they put the, yeah, when they it's, built it's, this porch. That, that's, it's really, it is hard to say. Uh, it, they could, it, could, it could have been Vasek, to be honest with you. It's, it's, yeah. it's hard to say. I think I think one over one double hungs would, in my opinion, be a more of a fitting look. You know, it would just make the whole house look a little bit more uniform with the windows. I'm sorry, Mark. I didn't hear all of that. Could you say that again? Sure, sure. Can you hear me now? Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, um, I think that uh, one over one double hungs would probably make it all look a little bit more uniform. I think that would probably be, in my opinion, the best fit. I don't know if I would like to see casement windows opening out. It just, I don't know. It's it's like it wants to be a porch, but it's it's an enclosed porch. It's just, you know, with yeah. all that massive siding, it's not really, you know, when you see those casement windows that turn out, there's a lot more window to the porch. I don't know. Maybe I'm overthinking. I think when the best we, we can ask hope for if a, oh, I'm sorry, Vasek. If a double hung it. window goes in, are you talking about two per opening or one large double hung window in the existing? I, I would I would keep the That's same I would keep the same layout. I'd want to have it look like two yeah. windows, yeah. Um, which I, I do know is it that is a possibility for this because we did explore that as an option. And there's minimal trim on that window now. I mean, are you gonna match the existing trim? Would you go with double hung and match? I know it's still a porch. It's but yeah, what are so, we doing on the exterior? Well, so this is this is this where is where it gets a little uh, there's a little bit of a gray area <laughs> because um, you're right, Chris. There's 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 no trim on the outside. It's like a, it's a jam. It's essentially what it is. Yeah. So either we have an option which I came up with, which would which would set the the window would still be flush in that opening toward the exterior. Um, uh, it, it, this and these these pictures are a little misleading because it looks like there's trim around them, but there is there is none. It's just the jam that you're seeing. Yeah. So, my thought was we could actually install this window flush with the front part of the jam, so that we could apply face. And I'll leave this up to you guys and and kind of go based off of what your recommendation is. But we could then face apply a um, a, a trim like a, a lifespan. We use a it's a naturally pressure treated wood material that's paintable. And we could then um, essentially trim the windows the same as what she has on the second floor or very similar to that. So then the trim would overhang the, the edges of the, of the aluminum siding that butt up to that jam. Am I being clear about how that would? Yes. Yeah. So I, I had thought about that as an option to kind of make this a little bit more you know, attractive and, and make it blend with the house. Um, but again, it's it's one of those things where this is a this is a, a unique situation in that you know over time this was enclosed and you know there was no trim on it. So I, I kind of would defer to you guys as to what you'd like to see there. Um, but that that was my thought was to trim around the edges and overlap that aluminum siding so that it looks like one of the upper like the second story window there that you can see. I think it's I think if you did that um that then that would merit towards making those windows double hung um uh, yeah. i i also think that if you look at what's left of the posts they're skinny <laughs> and they're barely visible and yeah. at least the trim around the windows near them is skinny and barely visible yeah. and i think for my taste it's hard to say for sure but I think the two over two or, or the, the, that vertical line down the middle uh, kind of plays off of the skinny other vertical lines that are left from the posts that are visible. So, I mean, I, I'm, I'm not 
I, I, I'm not saying that I would uh, go across country to uh, not have those windows be uh, one light, but I think that there's something about the current setup that, that strangely works. And maybe it's just that we're used to it. No, I think Doug, you're right. Most of the porch for good or bad that have been you know, on Church Street here, I can think of a handful of other enclosed porches that have some type of casement window and a thin molding uh, or, or either with a divided light or not. Um, well, yeah, I that, kind of just I, feel like- I would like... not want to see trim there, probably. Okay. Well, I, I think if, they, if he trims it like the rest of the house, then the windows should be like the rest of the house. Well, yeah, right. then you'd obviously right. follow that. Yeah, yeah that would I make don't, sense. I don't think you'd want to see no. the same trim with a two over two casement. It, yeah, I, that really, I agree. That really would look odd. I agree, Claire. If it's going to be trimmed out to match, then yeah. they should be casement one over one. And if you want to make it look a little more poor, if you want it to look like the rest of the house, that's as close as you're going to get. And then if you want it to read more of a porch, then the casement with no trim makes more sense. I guess it's just a... Well, Matt, I think are those full screens there now that are... I'm sorry, Claire. Are those full that... screens? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, they are. Yeah, I, I tend to agree. I, I think that if this is a porch, then... It should be look. It should look like a porch, and I, I, I if, you know, with the thin posts and the, the two over two, and um, I, I think it, we need to sort of maintain that. It, if we put, you know, if we're going to make it look like the rest of the house, I don't think that's the way that is being used in the front. Then um, I don't think we should change that. I think it was it's good. Everyone knows this was a porch that was closed, and it is what it is. And you know yes. it's it's trying to stay true to what it was, I think. Yeah, and and, and that was that was <clears throat> that was my very initial thought with with proposing those casements with the two over two pattern. Um, okay. But again, I you know just I, I just wanted to let you guys know what my thoughts were on that trim yeah. idea in case that was something that was more attractive. But yeah, it's a tough one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Either way. Yeah. Right. Well, thank yeah, you. I appreciate Matt uh, you bringing all that to us and asking us about it, but I think we ended up um, um, taking a more uh, limited view on terms of what the change should be here. Yeah. And Unless so we're going to restore the porch. Yeah. <laughs> we are not, 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 not yet. Um, just to clarify, so if the proposal is, if it's a casement as submitted, you are not increasing the trim. Correct. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Anybody else? Hearing none. Any members of the public wishing to speak in favor or against? Hearing none, we'll move on to application 6038-52 Garden Street. All right. That's me again. Um, <clears throat> Matt Gove, 70 Main Street, Gove Restoration. The similar but different. <laughs> um, <laughs> another port. Another problem. Yeah, another porch. Um, these windows are in a, a similar state um, of sort of disrepair. Uh, it's just not a very functional space. So the, um, the homeowners contacted me to kind of come up with some solutions as to what some options would be. Um, my goal would be to keep the same amount of windows um, a similar product. We'd use the Elevate, the Marvin. It's a pro the Marvin product. It's a it's a uh, simulated divided light. These would be proposed white windows because they have white windows on the rest of the house. Um, these would be um, installed to match this roughly the same footprint as what's there. So on either side of that front door, they have, um, I believe it's uh, a group of four windows, another group of four windows, yeah. And in between the, in between in, in the middle of each run of four windows, there's a, a, a slightly larger um, trim area. In that situation, so my, what I'm proposing we do, all of these windows sit on a, it's like a two by eight that, that is painted. We, we need to repair that because it's, it's, it's rotted. And so we want to put a cedar um, 
to buy material there to, to replace that. So that would look exactly the same. The, um, the run of four windows, if we take the, the, the run to the left of that door, uh, essentially where the, the it, right in the middle, we'd put, a, we'd put a post, a structural post to prevent any further sag that's happening in that porch. Um, that post would get, that would be our center point for our new windows that go in. So we'd put in uh, double casements again uh, on each side of that post. So we'd beef up the corner. We have to, we have to add framing to the corner uh, again for structural reasons, but we would ultimately end up with four casement windows on the left side of that door, four casement windows on the right side of the door, and then triple casements on both ends of, of the porch. Um, now, once those windows go in, we want to, my goal is to make this feel like it was always trimmed and framed out this for, for this house, for this porch, um, especially with using these new products now. So my goal would be to trim out the center post and around the windows. I, <laughs> I, had a, I submitted a very crude drawing of where my trim would go, but it would be tucked back. Be, it, it wouldn't be flush with the corner or the front door trim. It would be set back the trim around those windows and it would be um, set back into the soffit area. So it would, it would just finish off the joint where the window meets the framing essentially, um, but not be proud of anything. It would kind of look like it was, like the trim flowed back to where these windows are. I don't know if, if I'm explaining that correctly or not, but um, the, the triple windows on the sides would be one, the center window would be fixed and then the uh, flankers would be um, operable. It's going to go above the door. Nothing's above the door right now. We're leaving that front, we're leaving that storm door and we're leaving the transom currently. Okay. Those windows that are there now don't open at all, do they? they well, I don't know when the last time was that they, they open. They're, they're sort of beyond, um, but there are hinges on them, but I, I, they're, not, they're, not very, they're not very good in terms of their quality right now. Matt, would you call those windows storm windows before that would be applied um, seasonally or are they, they were permanent? Chris, it, to, it's, it's, it's really hard to say. I think that they were a permanent fixture based off of what I'm seeing. There are single glaze, it's a single glaze window. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's nothing fancy. I mean, it's your standard, um, it, it's a little bit bigger than what a storm panel would have been, I think. So it's, it's almost like a regular, casement sash that they added hinges to and and allow to swing so they push out from the sill when they worked or how did they open those those also they also open in yep they also open in so these the new windows we put in would also have um we would be, be matching the grill pattern now there are no, no grills on the rest of the house but we figured we would try to match this grill pattern we, we do the wider check rail as well on these um, but we would change the color to white. So when we did the painting work around on the exterior, we would paint that upper transom white. Is the whole house being painted? Uh, no, not, not that I know of. I'm not doing it, but my work, I, I, I had quoted the, uh, the client to paint the new material that I put up. And what are the posts, uh, the frame material? Is that wood going to be painted white or that's a wrap product? No, so uh, that... You won't see that uh, post from the outside, so it's going to be two two by fours in between the um, in between the four in the center point of the four casements. That's going to be um, essentially two two by fours, and then that's going to be a rough opening for our window. And then on the outside, we're going to do a flat casing to match what comes with the window. So it's going to be a li it's lifespan, and it will all be painted that same color as the windows. And lifespan is a treated wood, right? It's a naturally pressure treated solid pine yeah. material. It's a very, okay. very good exterior product and it's mm -hmm. not finger joint, it's not PVC. It's, uh, it's one of the only products that I, that I like to use on the outside of, of, of homes. Okay. These casement windows would be opening out these would be opening out. We're all very quiet. 
Yeah. It, I mean, it's another tough project because I don't think those windows were the original to the house, to that porch. Um, you know, it, there's lots of circumstances where on a sunroom with similar windows, I would want them repaired and retained. And, you know, it's a drag of a job, but from experience, you take the summer and you do one at a time and you get it done. You know, in this case, I don't know. And then we've got the hodgepodge of other windows in the rest of the house. Yeah, there's yeah, that. I just, um, you know, I have, I look at the house and I think again, the tail wagging the dog, the idea that we're gonna do modern material windows and then we're gonna have modern material side. I mean, it's just all gonna go plastic. It's a very, very prominent corner okay. right on the sidewalk. There's no wiggle room here. It's very visible. I know you said that the, um, the baseboard there is rotten and that needs to be replaced. Are the windows in really bad shape? Can they just be repaired? I mean, I know it's a lousy project, but we, most of us have done it at least once. Yeah, yeah. Trust, trust me, I, I, love, I love that type of project myself. I do like restoring things, um, but there are certain situations where, I mean, we're dealing with, what is this, eight, uh, 14 windows. Um, and, and, and I would say the majority of them are beyond repair. There are areas where it's you're you're essentially would need to rebuild the entire sash. It's not like uh, you can screw them together or anything like that. So yeah. it is it is a it's a it's a tricky situation. There's a there's a ton of there's a ton of like draft coming through those windows. And again, I mean with 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 woodworking, you can cut and manufacture boards to fit in certain areas. But that's not you know that's not the goal of my client right now. My goal the goal of my client is to kind of create a situation where they have a, a reliable window and um, they're able to, to use them and open them and get some airflow through that porch. Um, so that's, this is, this is what we landed on. And, you know, Matt, I, I, yeah. Uh, I mean, based on what you have just heard about the concern for the resulting feel, I mean, the Elevate is a fine window for some installations, but it it is a clad window, is it not? It's a it's a it's a fiberglass exterior right. window. Yep. Um, so this is that's pretty far away from um, saying that. I I mean, what about putting uh, operable wood? six over sixes in there or, or um single so that, like a, a single glaze sort of not 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 necessarily i mean it could be a i mean i'm not sure why you want uh sdls on a porch that's not insulated anyway right. so um but if it what matters to us mostly is what's the exterior made of. And so if it were an SDL that was wood with a, a wood applied divider on it, uh, if for some reason they wanted it insulated, uh, I, I don't know that that is impossible, but at least what you'd be left with is um, a uh, paintable product that could render more closely what is there um the the change that's proposed here might work like for instance if you're going to use elevate on the other windows you know we might be really happy about that but those we're talking about taking the most distinctive wood part of the house that's left and 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 abandoning that and that's kind of a, a leap that se seems yeah. pretty far I understand, Doug, um, but you know, as you walk up and down Main Street and you look at these homes that have gotten window replacements, there's several very prominent homes in town that have received, they've taken out the old wood sashes and they've put in aluminum clad um, windows. So, I mean, it's, 
you know, me for, for wood, I, I love wood windows. I love wood product. The problem is wood is so quickly grown and quickly harvested that the shelf life of wood is, is not what it used to be. That's what you could put in a piece of wood on a house and a, a trim board on the outside. That's not a, like what I use, like the lifespan pressure treated wood. And you can come back in two years and have it, have it starting to be punky on the bottom and rot it out. So I think to say that, you know, I think to say that, you know, we, we have to treat this house different because it's on the corner and it has wood windows. That, that's, that seems a little unfair to me simply because of the, the, the slew of houses up and down um, Main Street that I, I feel people have done a really good job on trying to maintain some character to them. And, uh, you know, that's why, that's why, I mean, I, again, wood is, wood, is, wood is great. I mean, there's nothing that beats the old wood style that, um, that was on these homes, but now it's just, it's, and Claire, I, I, I agree with your sentiment before is that it's, things are going plastic and, and, you know, you're right about that, but there's a cost associated with everything. And especially in today's market, um, with, with product materials being the way that they are, I mean, there, there's cost is a big, is a big factor as well. So, um, you know, to do a complete restoration of a property is, 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 often out of or a restoration of a certain section or, or portion of a project like this um, is puts puts a project definitely out of out of the realm and then we run the risk of having things go into further disrepair so well um, I, I I will say I think you were on stronger ground when you talked about the lifespan and the, the quality of wood I mean the fact is that it's probably a pretty analogous cost to come in with uh, double hung single pane wood windows to the, the, the windows that you're proposing. It, it's, each is expensive. So that's not a cost consideration. You no, know, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a it's a lifespan consideration. Right. Plus actually- uh, Like I said, I thought, I thought you, were, you, were, you had a good argument, the first argument. I think you're on the, stronger um, ground when you talk about the quality the, the, of wood. Yeah, well, I mean, when you're, I've priced out um, mm -hmm. Grosco, um, you know, single, you know, single mm -hmm. pane, uh, wood window for someone and it was like $650 just a simple basic yeah, double hung. Expensive. So I mean they, yeah they they they're 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 up there. Um, but again this is not what I'm proposing for this project. I'm proposing you know what my what I talked about with my client. I mean it's just you know I I, I appreciate everything you guys are saying but again I just um, you know if you I guess you, that I guess that what I'm saying that is that there's no doubt it's the commission that's driving the uh, suggestion of a different product. Uh, you're not being unfaithful to your customer at all. Uh, yeah. But the reality is, is that if uh, you, uh, I mean, the Elevate window has a certain cost to it itself. And depending, if the, if the goal is to make that year round living space, um, that that's a different goal than um, a, a wood. Well, I mean, that's a di that's a, a, a goal that can still be achieved with a wood product. But when you said earlier that other homes have been allowed to go uh, and abandon their wood windows, one of the things about this is that we have so many of them. I mean, uh, in a typical house, you might have as many as maybe nine windows in front of them spread out uh but on a lot of these houses where it was allowed you know the front facade may only be four to six windows here we have wood window against wood window against wood window correct yeah and so it we we are losing uh an an, an image that's much more powerful than than in a another setting it's also a, a circumstance here where you know the white just is going to pop in a yeah. way that the currently painted old wood windows no, don't. Not and so, yeah, not yeah. in a good way. Yep. And I think too, we have to differentiate between the older homes that have some window replacements in them and allowing a porch to go with these wood windows um, in this form, because typically, um, I can't think of any examples off the top of my head, uh, maybe Doug can, but we when we've replaced windows in a house, and it's had a sunroom effect, uh, we have not let those windows go. And, and that's similar on Or this. it's a sunroom that's at the very back of the house, which is much less obvious. I, yeah. I, I think that's a really good point, 
Doug and Jen both, that porch is really, it's a little house. It's the really, the really the the most house prominent. is the porch. Yeah, it's the most prominent feature on the house. Okay, well, I think we have some pondering to do because that one's not an easy one either. Um, okay. Anybody else have any questions? And again, nicely presented, um, but this is a challenge. Yeah, yeah I, I, mean, I, I, I can look if you, uh, if on you, both of them. If you would like, I, I believe that the, again, I'd have to clear this with my client, but, and, and actually my salesman, but I, I believe that that fiberglass can be painted. There is a process that you can paint that fiberglass. So I don't know if that would make it sort of a compromise where, you know, we're going to get that, we get that same trim look. I don't, I don't know if that's something that you guys would be considering. Definitely think it would blend better. So that's a question worth asking. If we're contemplating it. Sure. But um, but thank you very much. I appreciate the thoughtfulness of the application. Sure, no problem. There are no other questions. Uh, any members of the public wishing to speak in favor or against? Hearing none, we'll move on to application 6039 at 18 footpath. And it might be me representing the homeowner. Okay. He does not have access to a computer and I'm not sure he was calling in tonight. I'm sorry, Kim, I'm having a hard time hearing you. I'll get closer. Is that better? Yes. Yeah. Better. It, it might be me. Okay. All right. Go, Kim. <laughs> Kim Wolf, Town of Weathersfield. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm looking at the plot. So we have the plot plan. Um, we know what the material is, where it's going. It's just along that one line in between. It is. It's just the west. Yeah. It's just the west side. Okay. Does anyone have any, any questions? Hello. For Someone's Hello? speaking. He's here. Oh. Hello. Oh, great. Hi, are you there? Yes. Hello. Can you identify? Hi, I'm Tom Ayers. Oh, great. Hi. I, I, yeah, I've been here. I've been hanging on. Sorry. <laughs> didn't think, I apologize. We didn't think you were here. Uh, name and address. No, I'm here. Uh, 18 footpath lane. Great. So I don't know if anyone has any questions. I think we've got a good explanation of what you're proposing and all the detail with the application. Does anyone have any questions for Mr. Ayers? Yeah, exactly the, the same fence that that's on the south border of 10 Broad Street. Uh, it's a cedar dowel fence. All right, that sounds good. No questions? Anyone from uh, did I, did, just, I just had a question. Did I, did I write 70 feet on that or 72 feet? I have to tell the fence feet. guy. 72, right? Yes. Yes. 72, okay. Yeah, so they're, they're probably going to put eight eight foot posts and to make the 72 feet come out. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Rails. Pretty straightforward, I hope. I, I picked that fence because it's cedar. All right, that sounds right. great. I don't think we have any questions on yours. Uh, anyone from the public wishing to speak in favor or against? Hearing none, I will entertain a motion to close the post. Thank you, Mr. Ayers for hanging on. Uh, to close the public hearing and open the public meeting. Make a motion. I'll second. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, hearing none. Going back to 6021, the application at 14 River Road. I'll make a motion to approve as submitted. I'll second. Uh, I think the uh, the detail of the application, I appreciate them coming back with great detail, first of all. Second of all, um, this is uh, the type of fence that we have approved for in the district before. I think, um, I think it'll uh, protect the view of the above ground pool very, very well. Um, and uh, a completely appropriate fence for, for that type of property. And with the removal of the deck, I think um, it's going to be hidden pretty well. It, at best, you'll have a glancing view. Anyone else? All those in favor, say aye. Before aye. you vote, I'm sorry. 
Um, Jen, I uh, tuned in at uh, like 7.33. So I don't know if I'm a voter or not. So uh, if you need me, I was here from almost the very beginning, but- You are, um, Kathy's you, voting tonight. And perfect. So if you were here for it, um, you can certainly vote. I, I'm just saying if we have, if, if an alternate was already assigned, I want them to get the vote. I'm fine with that. I just didn't know if I needed to vote or not. Nope. No, you don't need to vote on this one, we'll Great. Vote, um, Kathleen, because she, you probably came in late on this one. That's oh, fine, yeah. and, and she can vote for all of them. Uh, I don't have a problem with that. Okay, all those Thank in favor you. say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. The application is approved. Application 6029-26 Wilcox Street. Vote to table. Second. Um, we need some additional detail. I think there's some miscommunication about what was added to the application since we did have at least one thing that was added, but um, not the balance. And I think we need the balance of those details. Uh, all those in favor of tabling say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, the motion to table is approved. Application 6033-271 Garden Street. Make a motion to approve as submitted. I'll second. It's a, 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 a very appropriate project um, with a complete application. We appreciate the additional detail they brought back. Thank you. Agreed. Um, I appreciate their work to get everything to us that we asked for um, in a timely fashion. All those in favor for approval say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. Application. 60342 footpath lane. I'll make a motion to approve as submitted. Can I have a second? I'll second. Uh, my reason being, I, I guess I agree it's not ideal, but with the kind of eyebrow pattern, it, it's going to be a minimal impact. Uh, it will match, it will be kind of disguised by that, by the existing trim. I think it's appropriate for that house. And you do realize that we're going to be discussing this again as an example of, gee, they did it down there. We're good. We want to do half it of the too. houses on Megat Park, half of the ones on Oldham Road have a very similar pattern. And that's a good thing. Hmm. Uh, to me, yeah. Okay. I think on this one, I agreed uh, with Vasek. I think that um, there are absolutely better choices. Uh, and as an example, there's on the next application, there's one directly across the street uh, that just has a nicer window set up. I do think- um, That's a more prominent house. This one, Jen, yeah, it's kind of on the side of the house. It's hidden. I know we don't count trees, but it is not as prominent as some, um, I would add, but I agree. Keep going. I, I also, I have to say, I find it less egregious. That's the right word. <laughs> Um, with the, the paneling and the other detail in the door, it, it, the windows don't come across as blatant as some applications that we have looked at where there's so many set into flat panels. I think fast succession of three panel doors is probably the best for this. So you don't really have to get to that eyebrow pattern, but right. most are for. There are I other think, options. I think that I just want to, you know, again, because we approve something for one house does not mean we need to approve it for another. Every every house is its own application. Um, I personally, I think there could be a better choice here. Um, you know, I, I did did not like the argument of the of the gentleman who was supplying the product, the vinyl insert on the door. I, yeah, I, it was just not. I think there's a better, a better opportunity or a better product that would represent that curved window, um, in, in my opinion. All right, all those in favor of approval say aye. 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 Opposed, nay, nay. Nay. Mark, I don't know who. Okay, nay, I'm sorry. Clear. Aye. Mark? I said nay. Okay, so the motion fails. Um, 
May I have another motion? I'll make a motion to table. I'll second. Um, I'd like to see it maybe a different window pattern on it or a different insert space on it. I'm not sure if this um, particular product line has it. Um, we weren't, we didn't discuss any of their options. So, or maybe just flat panels or flat panels. Agreed. So, all those in favor of tabling say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. The motion to table carries. Application 6036, the application for 55 Hartford Avenue. I am abstaining on this one, um, as I stated earlier. So Doug, if you wanna step in to vote on this one. Sure. May I have Wait a minute, this isn't, this isn't 55 Hartford Avenue. This is um, 41 sorry, Oldham Road. 41 Oldham, I apologize. 6035, 41 Oldham. Thank you for distinguishing. May I have a motion? I'll make a motion. Let's try it again to approve as submitted. I'll okay. second it for the purposes of the discussion. Again, my reasoning for proposing it. Uh, I do like the light pattern in this. I, I like the hardware. I, do, I am a fan of raised panels as well. I think it's appropriate for that house on Oldham Road. Uh, the only thing that I would say is that there are increasingly better products that we're seeing uh, in various places. Uh, I think I've shared one on Church Street. I've shared one across the street from this house on Oldham. Um, so I don't know if uh, the previous uh choice that there was always between a, a, a low-end product that didn't very well replicate uh, the look of it of uh, the original uh, that that compromise uh, isn't available to people so I, I'd be curious to see what the other members think about this particular when uh, door if, if you think that this is uh, the right one uh, based on more and more products being available that uh, seem to replicate the look of a traditional door. Um, great. If not, then maybe we should consider tabling this one as well. Well, just for the record, the um, Kim just put up a picture of the door that's across the street there. Yeah. Um, and that's the one I think you were referencing, Doug. Yes. All those in favor of approval say aye. 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 Uh, and opposed? Nay. Nay. For sure. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I haven't given my vote yet. Could I see the uh, proposed door one more time, please? The what? The proposed door one more time. The one that's in the application material? Yes. I don't have it available on my phone. In the middle of the meeting. And the spec sheet calls it a recessed short grain panel steel insulated door. That's the only picture we have. It's not up yet for Doug. Thank you. Oh, I held it up. Oh, I'm sorry. There it is. Sorry, I'm still getting to it if you want me to bring it up. Doug, can you see it? That's exactly what it is right there. That's the only picture we have in the application material. Uh, the next one, Jen, up. yeah, but this one has a simulated wood grain, it's saying too. 
There were no, um, it didn't have the cut sheet material in it. Right. This, just this. It didn't have a picture. Correct. Right. It, this is a drawing. You're, Doug, you're muted. I kept thinking I missed something. I guess I did not. Um, I'm getting it, sorry. Just take Thank it. you. It's okay, because it it there are not um, any other pictures in there except what I held up. Well, I, now I'm almost there, so now you have to. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Bye. thank you. Sorry, folks, it's just if it weren't a 2-2, uh, vote. I. There you go. Well, you could always let Kathleen vote. She did. No, no, hey. she is voting on this one because I'm she not. She is voting on that's that. That's right, because you're not. Sorry, I didn't follow that. Okay, so I'm going to call the vote again. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. I'll say aye. Opposed. Nay. And Claire, the motion to approve uh, is uh, the motion to approve passes. Application 6036, the application at 55 Hartford Avenue. Can I have a motion? And now we're back to um, all the regular members and Kathleen instead of Doug. I'll make a motion to approve with the following stipulations that the front peak had the kind of what I'll call dog tail ends to match existing wood. I'll second that. Yeah, Claire had a great point that that is a neat feature on that peak. Uh, I have the kind of similar cut shakes as well. Um, actually, if you look on the picture from the older, there's also the on the side, the uh, would be east facing also has those as well. Well, anytime there's a every yeah. time there's that peak, yeah. You do realize uh, that they can't do that. You know, Chris, I think that your I, motion makes sense because it maybe is a question that hasn't been asked before, and maybe correct that that's an inval valid point. You know that there is some spacing. I mean, you're talking about a seven inch. So when he met some of the overlapping, they're going for a seven inch exposure. That's still a lot of material left. If they have Pretty the J channel, way. yeah, it may, it may not be a satisfactory result. Well, keep in mind, it's a double seven. Awesome. It's a double seven. A double seven means that you've got two courses Correct. molded together. Right. Correct. And you're going to be trimming every course. No, so... there's not. If you, if you, yeah, true. Well, no, only really one right. of the, can you bring up that picture, Kim? Sorry again. <laughs> but I, I think Jen's point's a good one. Let's let them go back and ask. See if yep. they can figure it out. If they can't, they'll come in for an amendment. We can say yes or no. I agree. And, and that, I mean, they, they'll know within days if it's something that right. can be uh, written. And maybe the homeowners will focus on that detail and decide that, gosh, maybe we just do some wood repair, scrape it and paint it. Right. Yeah. Which I mean, actually saves a ton of money. And gives you the money. ability to change the color in 10 years mm -hmm. if you feel like it. But that's a different issue. Um, so I uh, I agree. I think you know they can come back in two weeks if it's an impossibility, and we'll have a very quick vote on what to do at that time. Right. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Aye. Sorry, Mark. Opposed. Hearing none. The motion to approve with the stipulation with the clipped corners on the end um, boards is approved. Application. 6038 52 Garden Street. Oh, I'm sorry. 6039 18 footpath. I have a motion. This should oh. be 415 Main, right? Yeah, 415 Main is next. Oh, what the heck did I? I'm sorry, you guys. I, I'm losing my light and therefore losing my eyesight. 415 Main Street, 6037. May I have a motion? Hmm. I'll make a motion to approve as submitted. I'll second that. So we talked around and around. I think where we ended up is that it should it should be a porch. 
It is a porch. It was a porch. It's kind of a porch. It should look like a porch. It shouldn't have wide um, um, siding. It already is an aluminum house, so we're not losing anything. We agreed we wanted two over two. I truly don't think the casement going out or in is, is important. Um, it, it's kind of a bad, it's like a, it's a bad place for that house, but this isn't gonna make it any worse. I agree with that. It's, it's minute, the trim is narrow. Uh, it's unfortunate that it was a converted porch. Well, I think those uh, casement windows are appropriate for that. So okay, uh, Claire, you're going with the divided two over two? Yeah. As submitted, yeah. As submitted. I Thanks. mean, again, I, 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 what else? Right, I said so, it. Uh, I'll concur with Claire. Uh, but I think the one note I wrote down here was basically we're not at a position to fix a really bad situation at this right. point. The best we can do, I mean, some other commission before us screwed this one up because when the, when the district was established, I was still an open porch. Uh, and, you know, seeing as we've waited this many years, I think the commissions can wait another chunk of years until some homeowner comes along and decides to do the right thing and convert this back to something that looks like an open porch, maybe screened, maybe with windows also, but make it look like an open, open porch and make those, make the columns exposed again and give it a proper sill, which is what it's missing right now. Thank you, Vasek. All those in favor of approval as submitted, say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. Application 603852 Garden Street. I make the motion to table. I'm going to second. Um, you know, it's, I think it's a, an incredibly difficult application because in part because of the windows that are already in the rest of the house but Claire you're right you know that should not lead our decision and um, the windows being proposed are not going to replicate what's there it's going to be a very different look Other I, feel like, I feel like we should let Matt um, come back with the information about painting the fiberglass I don't know that that's going to make a big difference, but that's a piece of information <clears throat> we don't have. I, I have to be honest that I would have a very hard time supporting the application as it currently stands. It's just going to be a completely different look. So, Not a, it's Yeah, go ahead, Kathy. I'm sorry. I, I totally agree. I think the windows, when we look at a house, are really the eyes of the house. And when you look at this house and you look at that glass and you look at the, the windows on that porch, you see the age in it. You, it tells you a story. And I, I don't think that, you know, changing these windows won't capture that. It'll, it'll be, it'll be new. It'll be very, you know, and I and I know that, and this is I think what we're facing in our in our district right now is we're facing you know we're getting older and what are we going to do? And this is coming up time and time again with us. And um, I, I really I think I, I agree with Jen's thought that you know repairing might be and saving some of that the beautiful glass and saving that wood might be. I wish he could look at that one more time with, with an eye towards that and, um, and come back to us and, and talk to us a little bit more. I, I, I get what he has to do, but um, it's striking, it's beautiful. And it tells the story of our town and you go by and you see yourself in it and you see a, a, little, bit of a, a little bit of a story. I've been standing here and um, yeah, I, I take to lose that. I mean, you realize that they want nice plastic windows to match the nice new plastic fence they put up in front. Yes. Well, that's another issue that I've been driving, I've been driving by and thinking, oh, it's really small, but it's not good. But there was a plastic fence there before that was painted gray. In the corner, I yeah. Was, I think it was wood. 
Nope. Now it was plastic gray. <laughs> oh, really? PVC. It was it was much less noticeable in gray apparently God. because. Um, oh, this job. I know. <laughs> Can I ask a quick question on if if you guys if we look at the picture the Polaroid from seventy five. And that's why I asked that storm window question, where they are they considered really storms or not? Because doesn't that look like that's all screened on that picture in 75? Let me get down to it. Unfortunately. Oh, but, what do you think, Vasek? I mean, because I, mean, I know there's a lot of porches. I unfortunately look, have jealousy windows, but a lot there are a lot of storms that are affixed yeah. to some of our open If porches. you look carefully at the uh, picture from whenever that was, you can see the grill work behind. There it. is grill, yeah, and the so, description does say that. I thought maybe, yeah, yeah it did say yeah. six over six, yeah. and I don't so know where else you can get six over six on these windows. Right. It's entirely so it possible. Is. It's entirely possible they had screens on the outside. You're right. The windows these, open, correct. open towards okay. the inside, right. and you've got ventilation without the mosquitoes. Right, these are open inside windows. They open, right. correct? Then. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I think that's go. exactly right, Vasek. That is what's there. Okay, yeah. so we have a we have a motion to table pending. I'd like to call the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, the motion to table carries. Application 60391 18 foot path. Make a motion to approve as submitted. I'll table. I'll second. Did you second, Claire? Oh, yeah, I said it wrong. Sorry. I'll second. Okay. Um, <laughs> It's a perfectly, um, I, I think it's interesting that the split rails are coming back with Yeah, event. we've had a lot. Um, you know, I like it because it's a, a little more open look, but still serves the purpose that they're trying to accomplish. Um, and in this particular location, it's um, perfectly appropriate and I think it will look very nice. All those mm. in favor? Uh, with just one sec. Uh, not that it makes a huge difference, but I think, didn't he say he's, doing a uh, dowel to match the existing as a, I mean, the nearby rather than split rail. Yeah. Oh. It's a rail fence. It's rail a fence. dowel yep. rail dowel fence raises. rather than yep. split yep. rail. So it's round, it's round rail as opposed yep. to split rail. Yeah. Yep. Right. Mm -hmm. It doesn't, it isn't a big difference, but it's enough that we should call it out so that there's not a question once it goes up. Absolutely. Thanks. To be accurate. Thank you. As submitted. Yep. Uh, all those in favor to approve, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. Hearing none, the application is approved as submitted. Approval of minutes of April 27, 21. Make the motion to approve. I'll second. Our usual kudos to our faithful yes. Christina <laughs> and, and thanks yeah. to our reporter. Uh, uh, Linda, for recording all of this for posterity, near and long term use, uh, and especially to Kim uh, for dealing with the uh, vagaries of the computer system the past couple of days. Thank you. That's for sure. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. Kim, do we have any other public comments on general matters for HDC? I don't believe so, but I'm holding because I see a phone number that I don't recognize. So I just want to hang on for one second. Okay. And they want to speak as the public. I guess not. Okay, I guess you're good. And um, any report, any updates for us? No. I just had one question with regard to the grant information that was presented to us at the last meeting. Um, are you going to send around a sample or what we submitted last time for this so we can tweak it and Kathleen has a chance to look at it and submit her own? Hi, I, have, I haven't submitted a bio ever either, so... Okay. Have, having something to look at and cheat off of would be appreciated. Yeah, I would send before. something out. I sent something to Kathy, so she has gotten something. She's seen um, a sample, but oh, great. Um, I just want you to go over the details of what this program entails before um, we jump into stuff. So that's my side note. Yep, that sounds good. We'll um, take a look at it. In the meantime, if you could just um, give us our dates that we served because 
Claire and Doug and Vasek and I have all been on previously. Can't, can't remember that far back. Don't know what our previous service dates were. Chris has been a solid stick along member as has Mark. They haven't left and come back. So um, if you could get us their dates in a sample, we'll uh, put it back together again. I will send that out within the next week. Thank you. Yeah, the town clerk, the town clerk would be a big help regarding that. The town clerk does have that information if I fail. Yes, we do. <laughs> anyway, thank you very much. Any correspondence? None. Thank you very much. I'll take a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thanks, everyone. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a good night. Bye.